You can program an Arduino and simulate it in Tinkercad, but what if you could do the same thing with a 3D print? Well, now you can. Tinkercad has code blocks for 3D prints. I'll tell you all about it on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters, and they get special access to ChepClub.com. So join us. Let's assume I want to make a little toy table for a dollhouse. So I'll drop a ruler in a corner, drag in a box, and let's make it 55 millimeters by 55 millimeters by 45 millimeters tall. To form the legs in the top, I'm actually going to take away material. So I can use a whole box and undersize it to give me six millimeter legs and a six millimeter thick top. Once I've got the Y direction handled, I duplicate it, turn it 90 degrees, and now I have the X direction handled. So I center all of these, and then group it together, and I've got a table. Pretty easy, right? But what if I want to change it? Let's say I change my mind and I want 10 millimeter thick legs and a 10 millimeter thick top. So the first thing I have to do is ungroup it so I can get access to those takeaway boxes, and then resize them to give me my 10 millimeter dimensions. And I gotta do this to both sides. And then once I've done that, of course, then I follow the same process, center everything, and then regroup it together. So it's not difficult on this design because it's pretty simple. But what if you had a design that was pretty complex and you just had one parameter to change? That could be a real pain in Tinkercad. Tinkercad already has the circuits capability where you can write code in code blocks and then simulate it running on an Arduino. You can already design a 3D object using code in a program such as OpenSCAD. But what about Tinkercad? Well, now you can do it using code blocks. It's a beta, and I'll show you how it works. Here's some examples that they've created. The first one is the table that I just showed you how I made in normal Tinkercad. And this is the code that creates it. I can control the speed and then run a simulation to show it being built. So let me click on Run, and you're going to see the code step through pretty much the same steps that I did to make my table. And when you're done, you have a 3D design. Now one thing I don't like about their samples is they didn't put any comments to tell you what they're doing. So it's a little harder to figure out. So what I'm going to do is show you how you can just add a comment to a program and I'm going to comment this whole thing. Every step so you know what's going on so I can help explain it. So the first step at the top here are the parameters. And those parameters are the width, the height, the depth, and the leg size which also determines the thickness of the top. The first command line, outlined in black, uses those parameters to create that box. And here it is. That's the box, 55 by 55 by 45. The box is centered around zero. And so the first step is to raise it up the thickness of the top, or the leg size of six millimeters. So here's the box being raised. The next command forms the first whole box to take away material. And because we raised that first box up six millimeters, it forms the top of the table, as you see here. The command after that creates the second whole box that's 90 degrees to the first. They're already centered to zero, so all we have to do is group them together. And that's what this command does. It groups them together and forms a table. The final command just uses a formula for the Z to bring the whole table up so it's level on the build area. And here's all the commands again, run in sequence in slow motion in the simulator, and you can see all the steps to create the table. You can click on the export button and then you can output a .stl file, a .obj, or you can send it to the part menu within Tinkercad. It'll bring up this create part menu and you can give it a name and then save part. And then when you go to your normal Tinkercad screen and scroll down to your part collection, there it will be at the top. So you can drag and drop it right into any Tinkercad design. You can also choose to export the .stl file, and this just downloads the .stl file. You don't have to go back to normal Tinkercad. So you can take that file that was downloaded, drop it into your favorite slicer, such as Simplify 3D, slice it, and then 3D print it. And here's a close-up of the 3D printed table that was designed in code. Now what if I wanted to change it to those 10 millimeter legs like I showed before? Well, in the code, it's easy. I change the leg size to 10, and then I just rerun it. Here's the simulation running with the new parameter of leg set to 10. And you can see it makes a 10 millimeter top, 10 millimeter thick legs. 
And obviously this is much easier to modify than the manual way that I showed you in Tinkercad. And to help you understand how to code, there's some more complex designs like a Lego brick. This bracket with holes is very interesting. And there's even a clock and fidget spinner. So if you can go through these 10 and learn how the code works, you'll probably be ready to start writing your own. I'm not sure I'll use this all the time, but this is very handy to have. And it's a beta, so I know it's just going to get better. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this type of video, maybe check out some of these other videos that are popping up. If you want to help support the channel, a dollar a month to Patreon gets you in the Chep Club. And if nothing else, click on that Chep logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time, right here at Filament Friday.